This episode of Dueling Ogres is brought to you by Dragon Age Inquisition. Find the link in the show notes below or on our Facebook in the comments to receive 20% off of your pre-order through Green Man Gaming. Prepare yourselves for a battle of epic proportions between two titans. Feast upon their voices and revel in their words. This is Dueling Ogres. and welcome to episode 18. Thank you for joining us as always on this redstone-powered Wednesday evening, Earth Date September 17th, 2014. I'm your host, Remington Hitchcock, and with me as always is my co-host, Brandon Full. Say hello, Brandon. Hello. How's it going? Good. It's nice to be back recording after missing a week. Yeah. Here in the studio. Here in the studio. <clears throat> it's nice to be laying back on our fainting couch, being fanned by palm fronds, being eating grapes like yeah. a turtle, just... Oh, Reaching up with our little turtle lips. Yeah. yeah. The microphone placed gently held by a nubile young woman. Yeah. It's nice. This is a good studio. Thanks. I mean, it could be better, but right, it's I not mean, bad. Well, I know that you aren't keen on all of the incense burning, but... I love incense. I burn incense all the time. I know. You like incense way more than I do. It covers up my smells. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'll tell you what, Brandon. You stank. I do sometimes you stank. That's true. Stank. <laughs> So yes, coming back from a week off, I are still sick. I uh, I are still sick. There's a I good there's rather. a good chance that as you listen, things will suddenly cut out real quick, and I think that's where Remington's going to be cutting out his incessant coughing. Yeah, it's uh, I, like I was doing all right there for a little while, and then all of a sudden, of course, when we go to record, yeah, that's how it always works. Yeah, always got stuff coming out my nose. Yeah, the LSD kicked in. Yeah. <laughs> Really? I was fine, but then I sat here for 45 minutes while we got all this stuff together, and now, you know. Really spacing out. Tripping balls. Oh. Kitchen demons. Kitchen demons. Feeding us bananas. <laughs> mm. Love them demonic bananas. So anyway, what have you been up to? Uh, well, I just finished the uh, last wing of Naxxramas and Hearthstone. Which is what, the third wing, correct? Uh Fourth, I think. Oh, wow. Yeah, I finished the last boss, Kel'Thuzad. Beat it with a pre-constructed deck, but I don't even care at this point. Like, it had, it had been out for a while, and I had to wait until I built up the gold to buy it. Mm -hmm. And then I uh, tried a couple of different decks that just weren't working for me. I wasn't getting the strategy or the right cards. The RMG was hating me. So, uh, random number generator, for those of you who don't know. Or ng. Or ng. Uh, range, if you want to shorten it for like D and D you know, range for for the bow. RNG. RNG. Yeah. 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 You're like, oh, you make sense all of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> what's what's up with this craziness? So yeah, I, I beat that, which was cool. Now I have to go through and beat them on heroic mode with preconstructed decks because I'm lazy. Why don't you just play the decks you've already made? They aren't good enough. And some of them you really do have to kind of, you really do have to build a deck around. Around beating the person? Around beating the uh, the enemy. Yeah, okay, so. gotcha. Also, in Hearthstone news, they recently hit 20 million registered players. This is off of WoW Insider news. Blizzard has hit a milestone recently with the free-to-play digital card game Hearthstone, Heroes of Warcraft. Breaking 20 million registered players. For scale, that's double the number of players WoW had at its peak during Wrath of the Lich King in 2010. The most amazing thing about this, Hearthstone has yet to release on all intended platforms, which would be Android tablet, Android phone, and the iOS phone versions that are still forthcoming. How much more are they going to get from that, though, you think? I would think that almost at this point, anybody who wants to play it either has grabbed it on computer or something separate. I mean, they're, they're definitely going to get more people on Android devices. 
Well, I mean, it's really it's really a, a mobile style game as far as it goes. I mean, I would much prefer to be playing at work on my tablet. I won't be able to, but yeah, I was impressed that when I was playing the game that it's clearly was made with mobile in mind. Yeah, but it's not that noticeable. You can tell, but it's not. It it doesn't overshadow the game itself. Yeah. Also for scale, though, the amount of people who have registered for Hearthstone is more than the entire population of Florida. <laughs> really? Mm-hmm. That's... More than ten times the population of our own wild and wonderful West Virginia. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's really impressive. If every person in West Virginia got ten copies of Hearthstone, it would be about equal. Huh. That's some interesting factoids that you looked up on the fly there. I did. It's. <laughs> I can read them all day. It's more than Ohio and Georgia put together. Huh. It's two million less than the state of Texas. Wow, only two million. This is from 2013 census that I'm looking at. Well, so. I mean that's the most recent census, I think. Don't they do those? Do they? They don't do those every year, do they? They do those every two years, maybe two or four. I think it's every leap year. I don't every know. leap year? Why would they do it every leap year? I don't know because there's one more day. So that's Census Day? I'm just making things They've up. just decided? Yeah. Out of all the cool things they could decide on Leap Year, every four years there's this extra day, this, like, phasing in and out magical day. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, let's do the Census. And the Census is, like, a months-long thing. Yeah. They go door-to-door and, and mail out stuff. Yeah. It's not just one magical day. <laughs> all the Census people are kept in stasis, and when the day phases out, so do they. Yeah. So their just entire existence is one day. <laughs> They're only, like, 12 years old. It's like Rumspringa for Amish people. I don't even know. What, I've never heard of that holiday. Rumspringa? It's not a holiday. It's um, every Amish child gets a certain point where they get to go out and break all of Amish tradition, and they get to use electricity and try computers and drink and all this kind of stuff. Oh, I didn't know that's what it was called. Rumspringa. Yeah. Rumspringa. The idea being that to continue with the Amish lifestyle, they had to have tasted what the other world is to know what they're giving up for their religion i guess yeah i got you which is kind of cool so you got into <laughs> into the uh uh world of warcraft beta also right yeah yeah i got into the beta uh ginger also segue yeah good segue <laughs> ginger also got into the beta which she's been playing since uh vanilla and uh she has yet to get a beta invite so she was really excited of course there's there's a catch here. She actually won it through Wowhead. The site was giving away beta keys okay, as part of promotion. So she didn't actually get hers through Blizzard. So, I mean, she still got it. She's still excited about it. You know, it's for her first time getting the beta after playing the game for so long. But it's still, it's, it's, it's bittersweet because it didn't actually come from Blizzard. Mine did. Why is it bittersweet? Just because it didn't actually come from Blizzard. She's been playing this game for so long... Her, she has almost never let her account lapse. I mean, she has been paying the sub ever since she started. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Um, I think she said except once when her credit card got stolen or something like that, and she had to cancel and it. And you got an invite from Blizzard just and I, apropos of nothing, just, yeah. <clears throat> hey, come play. Yep, because uh, you can opt in to beta invites. So, I, you know, I have everything opted in, even if I don't, even if I decide that I don't want to really play the game, like Heroes of the Storm. Yeah. Their new MOBA-style game. I'm opted in, but I, I don't think I'd... Now, Ginger did get an invite for that, and uh, she played through a little bit, and I played it as well, and it was kind of cool. I, it, I don't think it would be anything that I would get really into. I think if I had a lot of different people I could team up with to go and, and play with. Yeah, I'm not sure what you're talking about at all. It's Blizzard's League of Legends. Oh, okay. It's Heroes of the Storm, and it has their main characters from their different properties. So they have stuff in there from StarCraft. They have Diablo stuff in there. They have Warcraft stuff in there. That sounds actually pretty cool. Yeah, and uh, have you have you ever played League of Legends or any MOBA-style game like that? Yeah, I've played League of Legends before. Oh, did you? Okay. Very small amount of it. I was at a LAN party a few years ago, and they had League of Legends, and I played probably like an hour of it. Oh, yeah? Did you have fun with it? Everybody there took it way more seriously than I was prepared to take it. Yeah, they, League of Legends, I, I think, is one of the ones that's really known for its hardcore players. I mean, By I, hardcore players, I mean assholes. Yeah, I was definitely, I was doing my best, and it was like friends and people I sort of had met there who were all pretty cool. 
But um, yeah, for like the first half of it, I didn't realize that as you did stuff, you were supposed to go back and level up. Oh, yeah. So the game got infinitely harder, like three, four minutes in, and I had no idea why. Uh So I think I realized that I could level stuff up like the last game, Uh and I leveled up all of the wrong things. I was like, oh, man, this hat is cool looking. (laughs) Stuff like that as opposed to like, I just... As you know, whenever I had WoW and we played it also, I had this issue um, when we do raids and stuff where... Dungeons, yeah. Yeah, where there's those certain aspects of those games you're expected to, like, if you're playing this character, this is what you need to do. This is proven to win. Yeah. And I don't like that. If I'm playing a game where I'm given options, I want to just take whatever options I like the best yeah. and not have people give me shit that I didn't spec myself right. Yeah. So that was my big issue with League of Legends. It was fun, though. It's just not really kind of the game for me, I guess. Yeah, WoW, WoW is a little more open than that, because you can't really see exactly what people, or what you're spec as. Even if play style really enters more into it than just your build of the character, as far as it goes. So whatever whatever tends to be more comfortable for you. Because some people with with certain builds, with certain character builds, can't squeeze out the damage that they can if they just did their build themselves. Because it doesn't match their actual play style. Yeah. So that's that's kind of what I like about WoW. I, whenever I play, because my main is a priest, and I usually do shadow priest. I'll I'll look at a build and I'll I'll build it the way that you know the top tier kind of go with it. But then I'll go back through and I'll tweak it to what fits me better. Partially because I don't have the gear that they're running. And partially because it just doesn't match my play style. Yeah. So I have to I have to fiddle with like my keybinds and stuff to get get my spell rotation more apt to how I play it. Mm. But yeah, going back to the beta of Warcraft, I, I I've gotten in and I've played through a little bit of it. As far as I can go, or as far as I can see, there aren't really too many bugs that aren't like glaring bugs that I know have already been brought to the attention of the team. So, I mean, I really haven't found anything that's really bugged out on me too bad okay. to report. Because, you know, that's the point of beta testing something. Yeah, you know? so you have run into major bugs, but it's stuff that people have already acknowledged and they've said, like, yeah, we know, we're fixing it, Yeah, etc. Yeah, stuff like that. So, yeah. Are there any crazy bugs you've seen? No, I haven't. all in all, it's running pretty well. They, are, they don't have cutscenes in for some of the quests that you're running through. Because, you know, you're going through an introduction to going through the portal and visiting the old... The old... Draenor. The old Draenor. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Just going to the old Draenor. Going there, down there to the old Draenor. So that you're not actually seeing the new, new content. Like you're seeing the build up to it, but you're not actually seeing the new world in the beta. Well, no, you are. I mean, you go through the portal and... Oh, you do go through the portal. Yeah. Okay. You do. And uh, one of the first things that they kind of introduce you to is the garrison, which is their new player housing, basically. And uh, I've heard a lot of stuff about this. They've been this has been announced for a while, then, huh? Like almost a year. Yeah, uh, the the news for the garrisons have been out for a while, and there's been a lot of build up to it. Is uh, this the one we talked about a while ago that people were irritated that there was um, one of the main female WoW characters wasn't going to be in it? Uh, yeah, that we expansion mentioned that. Yes, in our yes. very first episode. Yeah, the, well, I mean, the, there's they're assuming that she's not going to be in it because no, they hadn't announced that she was or yeah. said anything about it. Yeah, with a lot of ca- with a lot of the characters that they had announced to that point, she wasn't one of them. So, but you know, it's a fair bet that we still might see her at least on the Horde side storylines. But a lot of her backstory, if I remember correctly, takes place during the point where. The demons have, uh, where, where the orcs have already drank the demon blood and infused their power into them. So, this is all really happening before the bulk of her storyline. So, are the expansions for WoW always moving forward, or is this like prequely stuff? Because it seems like it would be hard to release an expansion that was prequely. Well, there, it's kind there's of a, a living lot, world, right? There's a lot of timey wiminess going on in World of Warcraft. Uh, so, Really, what this is is we just defeated Garrosh Hellscream. He was taking the horde down a bad path. He got the power of the Shaw from Miss, Shaw. yeah, from the Mists of Pandaria, and he's using it for ill-gotten gains and trying to just overthrow the horde and make them 
he he's he's very against like the goblins and the and the trolls. He really wanted to just be the orcs. Okay. He really wanted to just power trip it out. So we beat him. He ends up slipping away from capture, going through the dark portal in the blasted lands. But instead of just going through it, he goes back in time to when his father was alive and when they first start drinking or stops them from drinking the demon's blood. And he and his father end up taking out Manoroth, which is the main demon that provided his blood and and uh, basically makes the work slaves. Do you play through this part of the story or is this all just backstory stuff? This is all backstory stuff. There is a cinematic so do, do they end, do this. they end it with basically wiping out everything you did because he went back in time and kind of prevented it from happening so they kind of have a little soft reset on the whole thing uh, it's it's just splitting off a timeline i mean if you if we're talking about time travel you know it's creating a separate timeline but do you the time in world of warcraft that, do you play in the new timeline or do you play in the old timeline you're you're playing in the new timeline to at least stop garage we don't as far as I haven't looked a whole lot into the storyline, I want to play through it. But, yeah, the point is just to... After they take out Manoroth, they still continue to build the Dark Portal, and they're going to invade Azeroth. The orcs are. Okay. So that's what we're trying to prevent, are the orcs coming into Azeroth and... Doing orc stuff. Doing orc stuff. Gotcha. Trying to take over the <laughs> kingdoms there, so... But it all sounds very confusing. It, it is. It is very confusing. But also a little sexy. <laughs> Time travel. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, they introduce, they go through and they introduce you to the garrisons and you, know, you get started building that up. And uh, there is just so much that I could talk about with the garrisons. But uh, if you're a world, world, world of Warcraft player, you know, you'll you'll get into the meat and potatoes of it. But it is really cool. Looking. I mean, how exclusive is the beta, though? Fairly exclusive? I have no idea. Okay. Um, it, it can't be too particularly exclusive. But Yeah, I mean, is there anybody in your guild that isn't in the beta or isn't unable to play? Or is it pretty much if you want to play in the beta, somehow, some way, you, you're able to? No, no. They still have to send you an invite or you have to win it through, you know, Wowhead or something to that effect. Okay. So... The actual expansion isn't going to release until after BlizzCon. BlizzCon is November 7th and 8th, I think. And Warlords releases uh, of November. And Warlords releases the 13th of November. So it's coming up here real soon. Uh, some of the other things that are going to be coming up, because they the way it usually works before they drop the new expansion, they'll have another patch for the old expansion where they kind of start throwing in the more quality of life changes that are going to be coming as kind of a preview. Okay. And uh, they are doing a lot of quality of life changes in Warlords. For a really long time, one of the biggest problems play-wise is your bag space. You would always, you, you'd always always be running out of bag space. Yeah. And even, with, even if you have your bank full, I mean, I have my bank full, I have my void storage full... And my bags, I keep pretty clean, but, you know, they can fill up really quickly. Yeah. So they're introducing what they're calling a toy box. So all of the little quirky items that you get, like the banana that you can throw down and people slip on, or the mask that you put on that makes you a monkey, or things of that nature, are going to be going into the toy box, which makes them more like a spell ability. You can just click on it and use the item like that. Oh, that's neat. So they're really freeing up space by making this toy box. And there's a good three pages of, I don't know, it's probably maybe a hundred items or so that are that are included in this. And they, I think they're intending to do more as well, like with the heirloom items, which are items that you can purchase to give to your alts to uh, increase their experience and, and the... Um, the stats level up with your character, so makes everything a little easier to level up. Say so you're not, um, you don't have to decide, like, oh, I really like this banana peel thing, it's funny, but it's taking up a slot in my bag space that, you know, I really, I'm going on this and I really need that. I don't want to get rid of it because I like carrying it around, but, so they're making that decision a little easier. Yeah, exactly. 
So, yeah, that's just one of uh, many quality of life changes that they're doing. Uh, one of the other ones, they're doing a stat squish, which the numbers are basically getting out of control. We've talked about this before. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're just squishing all of the numbers down and squishing all of the bosses down to where, you know, they have smaller health pools. Their spells, everybody's spells and stuff do, you know, less damage. But in the curve. Yeah, yes, gotcha. In the curve of the game. Why are they doing that? So everything's basically staying the same instead of like, oh, this spell does 500 damage and the boss has 10,000. This spell does 50 damage and the boss has 1,000 yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, that. I mean, it, that's a very rough explanation, but that's the case. It's the only kind of explanations I do. Basically because the the engine itself can't take the numbers anymore. Okay. So it, the numbers are just getting too big. It's going to bog down the system. You'll see bugs, you know, yada, yada, yada. All sorts of things. Are people finding an excuse to bitch about this in some fashion? I'm sure they are, but any that you've noticed? Not really anything that I've noticed. I think it's gone... I mean, I haven't gone looking for it, but I think it's really gone largely unnoticed. And I'm sure people will be like, oh, I miss seeing the, you know, me doing 100,000k damage. It was up that high, oh, yeah. some of this stuff? Yeah. Jesus. In, in the last... Let's see, in the last uh, raid that I did, I think I was capping around 119k damage per second wow yeah so how many geez, how much health did these bosses have then a lot <laughs> like millions oh yeah in the millions wow yeah yeah i get that makes sense yeah so i mean it'll still feel the same mm-hmm. it's just that when you're looking at the actual numbers they'll be a lot smaller yeah and uh really i don't think that it's going to be as big of a deal as maybe some people will make it but I haven't seen that it that it that people are making a big deal about it anyway. I think it's something that everybody understands kind of needed to happen. Uh, along with that, you know, the gear is getting squished down as well. So instead of having you know a thousand intelligence or a thousand intellect added when you pick up a new gear, it's only like a hundred. So. But again, it's all equivalents. Yeah, it's all equivalents. So uh, one of the other things that they did was taking out spells in classes. It it came to a point where there were so many new spells that it was really kind of bogging down. You had, you know, they're very um, case-specific spells that you would want to use for certain things, but they weren't really seeing a whole lot of use. So they really went over the different classes to concassitate the spell list and just cut stuff out and make it only for certain specs where you have one spell versus another. Concassitate? Yes. What is that? I think I used it right, but let me check. <laughs> like compress? I've never in my entire 30 years heard the word concassitate. Concatenate? Concatenate. Also I have said never heard that word. Yeah. Huh? To link things together in a chain or series. So I didn't really use it correctly but it's close so you both mispronounced it and, and used it wrong used it wrong fantastic yeah. good fantabulous fantabulous concatenate concatenate concatenation boy this <laughs> so is really yes, so, yeah. are, so far off topic anyway so they got rid of like um in current tier i can cast a heal over time spell on my priest in shadow form in the new um, spells, I don't have that in that spell list. It's in my discipline and my holy spec, but it's not in my shadow form spec. I do get a heal spell, but it's it's kind of a one use, two minute cooldown sort of quick heal spell. Okay. So they're making it to where you don't have as many buttons to push, so you're not as bogged down by it. So are they combining some spells too, or just? Straight up just taking out stuff that people don't really use that much. Both. I bet that's got a lot of people up in arms. Yeah. They're, I mean, I would imagine, you, you know, you've got this random spell that barely anybody uses, but those people that do use it, I bet, are like, what, they're taking out, you know, whatever. Yeah, there are definitely some spells. Fish fry? <laughs> there are definitely some spells, and I was like, well, that kind of sucks that they took it out. Like my heal over time spell. I used that fairly frequently. Yeah. But it really didn't, I, I understand that it really didn't need to be, it didn't really fit in with the theme of the spec to have that heal over time spell available, and it was just an extra button. So, even though I used it a fair amount, just to take the brunt off of other healers in while I'm in a raid, you know, so they're not having to heal me as much. Okay. Or heal other people as much, you know. 
it was still it was still nice to have, but it wasn't a necessity. As long as Polymorph is still in there. Well, I believe it is. That was the only spell that I ever really enjoyed <laughs> when I played WoW using. I mean, they were fun, but that was the one that I just enjoyed the most. Yeah, to well, that's a, that's a crowd control spell, so... Yeah, I, I believe it's still in there. I haven't looked at... Uh, I've only been in... Looking online. at the classes that affect you. Yeah. I mean, I have a mage and stuff, but I... So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot... Like I said, there's a lot of other things. Um, in 6.0, you won't be able to start the legendary quest... They're going for the cloak, which is the legendary item that we got in Miss of Pandaria. They're taking that quest line out uh, when this next patch hits. So if you don't get it done before, so if you, don't you just get don't it have done, it. Yes. Which uh, is actually one of the few times that they've ever taken a legendary straight out. It is kind of neat to do the, to reward people who've been playing for a while. And they're also taking out the heirloom vendors, which were what I said before, the gear that'll help level your character. Yeah, so out. are they taking out heirlooms altogether then? No, if you have the heirlooms, they'll still be available to your characters. But if you don't, are they just unavailable to new players then, or people who haven't bought them? They're being temporarily removed. Blizzard has posted this morning revealing that Justice Point heirloom vendors are being temporarily removed from the game in patch 6.0.2. So that probably means that the heirloom vendors somehow mess with the patch after that. So they're taking them out to implement the new patch while they try to get the vendors to work correctly with whatever new stuff they're implementing. I, I think it has more to do with the fact that just the the heirlooms tend to be very strong while leveling. Yeah, you know, they're a little OP. So for that first introduction into the patch... And uh, they don't want people to just blow through the content. They okay. really want you to experience it. So yeah, instead of leveling through and skipping content, they want you to see what they've put out. Which makes sense. So they'll probably come back out so a little, probably after uh, the first patch of Warlords. Okay. The next patch after that. So usually I, they've done stuff like that before. And then with BlizzCon coming up, they released uh, their new BlizzCon pet, which usually when BlizzCon releases, they have a pet that goes along with it. So if you get the virtual ticket or if you're actually going, you get a code for an in-game pet. It looks like a fish with a torso. Now, the last couple of years they've done Murlocs. And uh, this one is a mer kind of a murloc version of Grom Hellscream named Gromlock. It's just a cute little horde-looking orc-looking murloc. Can you use them with, like, the Pokemon system then? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. So it'll be a battle pet. There's a lot of World of Warcraft news. Yeah, it really was. There's a lot going on. Yeah, there's definitely just a ton of stuff. Oh, oh yeah, and uh, you know the haircutting system that they have in there? Yeah. Uh, they are also adding face changes as well into the barber system. New stuff that you couldn't get when you make your character, though? Or well, is it they, just going to be... They also updated the character models with new uh, graphics. Uh, so if you have your character for a while, you can go and change them to the new. Well, it'll automatically change that, or if uh, that's too hard on your system, you can actually turn it off and use the old character models. Mm -hmm. But uh, with these updates, you know, the face is going to change slightly, and you may not like the look of it, so you'll be able to change your facial features. Oh, and that's neat. Yeah, which is something that you actually, when we talked about the character updates in, a, in an earlier cast, you said it'd be nice if they had that in, because a lot of games do. Yeah. Changing your body type and stuff like that. So they're doing exactly that, at least for the face changes. Yeah, that's neat. Especially with World of Warcraft, I find my issue with MMOs, and this can lead into me talking about playing Destiny, is that I guess I understand why they have such a limited amount of customization you can do as far as your facial features go. Uh -huh. You know, it makes sense to have a, a certain combination of faces it has to keep track of and render versus an infinite combination of, you know, whatevers. But that was always kind of my complaint with World of Warcraft and MMOs in general is at no matter what, at, at some point in time, and normally pretty quick into the game, you're going to meet someone that looks exactly like you. Yeah. And that takes me out of it a little bit. I enjoy really customizing my character if I'm playing an RPG. Yeah. I, I agree. I have a lot of fun just kind of dicking around with um, facial settings mm -hmm. and trying to get your nose, you know, oh, I decide I want to have a really, really fat nose, so I'll just stretch it all the way across the face and yeah. dial it back <laughs> to where it doesn't look completely ridiculous. But, still <laughs> but it's right on the edge of being completely ridiculous. Yeah, just stuff like that. 
Yeah, I've been playing uh, Destiny. I got it Monday uh-huh. or Sunday evening for my birthday, and um, yeah, their customization is very limited on it. Uh-huh. I mean, really, the only time customization matters as far as what you look like is when you're in the hub city. There's only one of them, at least that I've found so far. There may be more, but I'm pretty sure there's only one hub city. Okay. Um, anywhere else you're wearing your helmet, you can't take off your helmet, so it doesn't matter. But yeah, there was like, I went human for my character and maybe six faces I think you can pick from. And you can't like, okay, here's my basic face model, pick my nose, pick my eyes. It's just basic six face faces, model. that's it. Yeah. So I had a little bit of an issue with that, especially because Destiny, they're touting kind of as an MMO. Uh-huh. And I mean, it is in a way, but it's not. Have you seen anything from Destiny so far? Aside from just cinematics, no. Uh, commercial spots and stuff, no, I haven't. Yeah, they've been doing a lot of live commercials. Have you seen any of those? Huh. They have real actors, and they're doing making it kind of look like a space movie-ish. They're like two, three-minute commercials. I see them a lot on YouTube. Okay. Um, no, Destiny's... I, I, yeah, that's where I usually see Yeah. Them. Destiny is a lot of fun, though. It's really selling well it's also getting a lot of shit online from people because you know people just shit all over almost anything that comes out new yay shit yeah i'm having a blast with it though it's first person it's by bungie people who did halo right uh and you can definitely see the halo influence very very strong you can see the halo influence yeah um first person shooter and i'm not a first person shooter fan really i like you know the elder scrolls but a straight up Space Marine first person shooter, not really a fan of. Right. But I'm having a blast with Destiny. Well, you have three character classes to choose from. You can be Warlock, Hunter, or Titan. What you choose from that kind of affects your special abilities a little bit, but overall there's not a huge difference in class besides what you look like. Okay. But yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. I'm not too far into it. The level cap is twenty, which kinda sucks. Okay. Because I've logged I'd say probably six, seven hours into it since Sunday, and I'm at level 14. Oh, yeah? And I'm not even a quarter of the way through the story. So I'm not sure what's going to happen. I know I should probably just be hitting the story points in order as you go, but there's extra little side missions you can do. There's dailies and stuff, which is neat. Yeah. The hub world, I feel like, is kind of lacking because you have somebody who sells stuff to you for whatever class you are. Right. So far, that's never updated for me. So, very quickly, once I hit level four or five, that stuff just didn't matter. Okay. The, the, I mean, there's similar things in World of Warcraft where there are just kind of vendors where you can pick up some stuff to kind of even yourself out a little bit, but when you get to a certain point, that stuff just doesn't matter anymore. Yeah, I just, I wish it would update, or maybe even if they just had a second tier that was already there from the beginning, but you couldn't, because I think that that kind of adds that carrot dangling in front of you to say, ooh, once I hit level ten... I really want to get this piece of armor. You know, I'm going to keep grinding and make sure I have enough money. Hit Oh, I hit level 10. Let's go buy it. Yeah. And there's a little bit of that. Like, the vendors, they'll change the stuff they have. It, totally time dependent. Some of them I've seen, like, hour it'll change. Some of them it'll be, like, every 24 hours. Uh-huh. They really are pushing the PvP aspect of it. Yeah. Because you can go through the missions, and what it'll do is we'll pick what is called a fire team. So it'll say, like, here's this mission... And this is kind of neat. You can play at normal, which will be level, you know, eight, for example. Or you can go to hard if you're higher level or just want more of a challenge, and it'll up it by, like, four levels. And everybody will be tougher, more equivalent to your level, kind of. Okay. Um, and it'll pick, it'll find other people who are also playing that instance and throw you in there with them. Okay. But it doesn't throw you in there, like, you don't hit a loading screen where it's, like, finding players, boop, and drops you all off at once. Right. They could be in totally different parts of it, and you just kind of come across them, and you can choose to then team up with them or go it alone, which so far I've just been going it alone. Um, I have hit certain portions where it would have been a lot better if I had other people with me where I've died quite a few times. Yeah. But overall, I mean, I'm glad that I can play it alone. I'm not really a huge fan of playing multiplayer with people I don't know. Yeah. So there's that, but the PvP is a really big part of it, and that's kind of what I think their end game is. After you hit, because I say level caps 20, you can get up past that, but it's an entirely different non-XP based system. I don't quite understand it, so I can't try to explain it, but it has stuff to do with the equipment. The better equipment you have, the higher level you're considered. That's very MMO centric. They have. That's how it is in World of Warcraft. You you go through the storylines and stuff as you hit level cap, and then after that, that's when you do the raids 
and things of that nature. You know, the top level PvP and going through the raids and that sort of thing. Yeah, and with this, at least from what I understand, like you go through raids and you'll kill a boss and you need like, you know, six people to take down this guy. And then you have a chance, I think this sounds very much like, wow, you have a chance of getting a piece of equipment that when you equip it has enough what they call light. And they look at your cumulative light total and all your uh, armor and weapons, and that decides how far you are above level 20. Okay. And I think the full cap is 30, with everything maxed out on light so far. Um, they released... So are we talking like 20 level and 30 light? No, it's not... Um, it's not based off of one light per point or whatever. Okay. Um, because I've seen items I can buy at some of the places <laughs> that are required level 20 to buy, and it'll be a cloak that gives you so much armor and gives you 198 light. I gotcha. It kind of sounds a little bit like, wow, with them with their numbers getting too high. Because I'm guessing you probably have to be in the low or even multiple thousands to be, because this was one piece of equipment that by itself gave you 200. Yeah, well, it's item level, and it's probably an average. Yeah, it's basically. I mean, that's the that's the WoW equivalent. Is that it's an item level, and then they have an average of all of that gear. So, like, if you have five pieces of gear that are item level or light level one fifty two, then your average gear score is one fifty two. Okay. Yeah, I'm not a fan of PvP. I'm not great at first person shooters. Yeah. I try to be up a level or two above what it's recommended for what I played because I like going through and it's a challenge because I'm not that good but I still if I get a headshot one shot and they're dead right as opposed to if I were playing an under level sometimes straight up headshots not going to kill an enemy yeah so yeah I did some pvp because the game makes you do some of it yeah as part of it it says you got to go to the crucible is what it's called and do five matches and that's all the storyline requires of you to do Right. So I went through and did those, and they have a whole bounty system where you can get dailies, like, go to the moon. How it works, and I'll try to make it short, is you have your ship, you start at your hub world, you pick different places you want to go. There's old Earth, there's the moon, there's, uh, you eventually get to Mars and Venus, and I think another planet, too. I'm not that far into it, I'm still, got to Earth, now I'm doing stuff on the moon. Uh, I could finish up the missions and go to the next world, but I'm kind of just trying to level up and get better equipment on the moon first. Right. But you'll, like, click to go to, say, the moon. And then it shows a map of the moon and has little points. And there's normally, like, four or five of them starting out. And as you beat story missions, more of them will unlock. Okay. And you can pick those, and that'll throw you in an instance with other people that are also playing through that instance. There's patrol missions, too. Okay. Where you'll click, I'm going to do this patrol. I'm just going to patrol the moon. And it drops you, and you have free reign of the entire map. And there are little points you can go to to unlock missions. Uh, one of the big complaints I've seen with Destiny, and I kind of agree with it in a way, is the missions that you pick up, the patrol missions, are all the almost the exact same. They change what's around the mission, but the point of it is the exact same. You go to a point, oh, something, something, storyline, kill 50 enemies. Right. You go to a different point, something, something, storyline kill 50 enemies again very mmo centric yeah they'll do that um get me four boar tusks they do that a lot too it'll say kill this specific enemy and they'll drop this thing on like it, it seems to me that they drop it more often than not but don't always drop it yeah and you know get collect some of these um there's those missions a lot and the third type and the out of the only three types of missions that i've ever seen is you pick up uh, mission here go halfway across the map to this other point that's it the other point you once you get there you have to like hold x and scan the thing mission mm. done yeah but it's basically start here go there done right so i've seen a lot of people complain that the missions are repetitive i i would agree but so far the game itself is fun enough the controls are really really tight um pretty early on in the game you get a double jump okay I can't remember. I think it was like this in Halo. When you jumped, it was kind of floaty. You had a little bit more control over it almost. Yeah, yeah. Destiny's like that. And with the double jump, I mean, you're jumping like 20 feet into the air. So it's a lot of fun. You know, running up and jumping after double jumping into like the third story window of a building, shooting. You can like pull out your sniper rifle while you're flying through the air and stuff. Oh, yeah. Definitely. So I'm really impressed with the controls. Um, the Crucible 
has four different modes to it. I've only played one of them, Control, which is basically capture the flag, like, yeah. park here. The enemy controls this flag. You stand here, you slowly wipe down their control, and now it's neutral. And then continue to stand there, and now you control it, and it's a point-based system, you know? Right, yeah. Most multiplayer games have some variation of that. Yeah. I was a little thrown off at first because I went in probably around level 7, uh -huh. and the people I was playing were like level 23, level 25, 18, stuff like that, and what I was just getting my ass stomped just over and over and over, and it really irritated me. Like, why are you not putting me in here with people that are my level? This is ridiculous. Right. The way they combat that or what they say is that the armor and weapons you use are averaged out. So somebody who's level 23, their armor and weapons are going to be nerfed a little bit, whereas your weapons are going to be stronger. The idea is that they're supposed to be meeting in the middle. Scaling. Yeah. Well, I, I know that it's because I'm not great at games and I'm playing people who play Call of Duty and Halo all the time. I know that that's part of it. Right. But I also really feel like there's more to it because you get your class-specific abilities, for example... Those aren't scaled. Those are just whatever level you are when you get those abilities. Yeah. And, for example, the Titan class, which is like, uh, for sake of ease, it'd be like the fighter. Tank. Yeah. yeah. Their ability is like a ground pound shockwave damage. Okay. They can jump. They can also jump in the air, and they kind of like hammer down. AoE. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> that doesn't seem like it scales, because I was on a team plan earlier today trying to get my bounty or whatever done. And uh, we had, like, four people between level, I'm now level, I think, four, yeah, 14, like, level 5 to level 18, standing around. This titan comes in, jumps over us, does his ability, and kills all of us in one hit. Wow. And that just doesn't feel like, it, it seems like they don't scale down those abilities at yeah. all. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's just insane i don't like the crucible i know again that part of it is because i'm just not good at these games and i'm playing against people who are yeah but it just it really doesn't feel fair i get i'll i'll get killed sometimes and just like oh cool the guy shot me with a pistol from 100 feet away when the range shouldn't work and just one shot dead yeah and that guy probably got a full-on headshot on me but it's not going to be balanced because i've had times where i found i've seen somebody standing fired at them with my machine gun and hit them just bah, 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 10 12 times watch their armor go like their shield go down their health go down like a third they turn around one shot kill me yeah so again maybe they're getting headshots i don't know but i really feel like there's more there and until that's fixed or i hit upper tier i just really have no interest in going back and doing it yeah i don't have a headset that might be part of it I assume that if I had a headset, I'd be hooked into who I'm, who I'm put on my team with. Yeah. I'm kind of glad that I'm not because I typically am at the bottom or <laughs> second from bottom. And I know I would have a lot of like, for the thrill, fuck you, you suck, you know. Yeah, yeah. Which goes along with those. But yeah. overall, I'm having a lot of fun with Destiny. Out of the box, there is an advertisement for the next two DLCs, which I thought was a little fucking, it's a little something. I don't know. I know that's the way games are going now, focusing on DLC. I got the game as a gift. I didn't spend the $60 on it to get it. Yeah. But even as a gift, I was just a little irritated. It's cool to know they plan to support it. But to me, when a game is released and they're already touting the DLC, it just reads to me that this is stuff we could have put in the game. This is stuff that's probably done, but we're going to charge you $15 more in a month. Yeah. Uh, now, from what I've read, Bungie has like set a year-long, at least, plan in place to... like keep putting out dlc and keep upping the level cap like mmos do you know right yeah so i'm hoping they do something with that maybe add in a new class at some point would be cool but yeah i don't know i would definitely recommend getting it i wish you had your xbox hooked up because i'd try to talk you into getting it so we could play online sometime because it is a lot of fun yeah and i might at some point get it because it does sound like it's a lot of fun yeah you played the shit out of halo yeah and I think that you would enjoy this for that. There's yeah. enough Halo in there you can feel. I mean, I'm going through missions now where it's like, attack the Citadel. I mean, they're even like throwing you in the Citadel, just like in Halo. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's the alien races. They're intelligent. They worship weird alien gods. I just did a mission where, it's all first person. I did a mission where I had to get like some old sword that an alien race used. Yeah. I picked up the sword. It went to third person and I had a boss fight sword on sword against a dude huh, that's cool um yeah this uh, well i won't spoil what happens with the sword but you won't you can only use it in that one mission uh, okay. but i specifically i'd read about this before i got it and the class i picked hunter 
has a subclass you can take at level 15, so I'm almost there, uh-huh. called Blade Dancer, where you get an ability to pull out your own like energy sword and go to third person and use it. That's cool. So I'm looking forward to that. I've never seen anybody in the Crucible use it, uh-huh. which makes me think that it's probably not super effective against players, because you, know, you can run at a dude with a sword all day, but he plasma rifles you in the face, it doesn't matter. Yeah. But yeah, it's a lot of fun. I really think you should pick it up at Never some point. Never bring a sword to a gunfight. Yeah, even if it's an energy sword. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Lightsabers. <laughs> energy sword. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would like to... I do need to get the uh, Xbox hooked up, and I'd like to play a couple of rounds of Halo just to kind of... Just because I haven't in a while. I really miss playing that, so... Well, you should come over sometime. You can... um either play my character or make your own character on destiny and you know give it a whirl for a little bit try it out cool i have movie reviews i was talking about i'm gonna make them short and sweet because we've been talking a while i know we can keep going or whatever but yeah whatever uh ninja turtles right talked about that over a month ago on our ninja turtles episode (laughs) i wanted to see yeah i did see ninja turtles it was better than i thought it was i liked it coming out of it i thought that was a lot better than i thought it was it wasn't great but it was better than I expected. Yeah. Michael Bay's fingerprints are definitely all over it, even just as a producer. Yeah. If you like Michael Bay or Michael Bay movies, Transformers, that kind of stuff, Ninja Turtles will be right up your alley. If you hate Michael Bay, Ninja Turtles, you're going to be super annoyed. I'm kind of indifferent to it. I have no interest in seeing his movies, but I'm not, I don't actively hate like, oh, fucking explosions all the time. Yeah. So it was all right. I mean, there are definitely just over the top explosions and like all towers falling. Hold on. Whoa. Fireworks, you know, like that kind of stuff. My big complaint is the Ninja Turtles don't ninja at all. There's no ninja going on. In, In what sense? They're not sneaking around. There's no, all right, go through the air ducts. You know, throw a shuriken to distract, sneak up behind, sleeper hold, whatever. Yeah. None of that. It's they're straightforward. They're ninja in name alone. Yeah. It's otherwise they're just brawl. They're they're all. There's no no sort of sneaking at all. It's yeah. just straight up. All right, we have to get into this compound. Let's go. Yeah. Um. During part of the big climax of the movie, it had that feel. It's like that mix of shaky cam that action movies love to do now. Yeah. Where action's moving so fast, you don't really know what the fuck's going on. Yeah. So that was kind of a problem, because the last, I say, third of the movie is just one huge action scene of stuff. Like, we gotta go here and fight some stuff, and then here to fight the other stuff. I watched it with my girlfriend, and we were both looking at each other multiple times, like, do you know what's going on? Do you have any idea what's going on? Just back and forth. So that was irritating. I really don't get why Hollywood is really going with that shaky cam during action sequences it makes me think that it's cheaper it's so easy to overplay and yeah i mean it might be cheaper i don't know than to show a full-on action scene from a camera out you pull it in real tight and the action's implied you know you have an action you have your shaky cam of like for an example the specific scene in turtles i'm thinking of they're like chasing a tractor trailer with their truck and they go off a ramp and now they're basically the tractor trailer and a truck are basically skiing down a snowy mountain chasing each other. Right. One of the turtles is underneath the bed of the truck, hooked on, like hitting bumps, sliding on a shell, trying to climb up. Yeah. Most of the action takes place underneath the truck, following that turtle hanging on, and other turtles coming and helping him. And it's, it's funny, it's a neat action scene, but, like, most of it they just show underneath the truck. So that's got to save them money on, like you know, millions of dollars it would take to CGI animate a five-minute, ten-minute scene of this kind of stuff happening, you know, aerial view. Yeah. That would be my guess, anyway, at least partially. Yeah. But, I mean, even even just in other sequences and, and movies and things like that, even, like, say, a Jason Statham movie, you know... Well, isn't get... that where it got popular, really, was, like, the... Some of them, Crank yeah. movies? Yeah, some of them. Uh, Crank especially was very shaky cam because um, he was doing a lot of running, and it made sense to do it. Wasn't Born the Born movies? Aren't they pretty <laughs> notorious for that kind of like yeah. real close up on fight scenes, like yeah, quick and that, cuts, and, and and that's all fine, but it doesn't need to to the camera doesn't need to move through all of that either. Mm-hmm. You know, I'd much re- even if you're going to do a close up on a on a fight scene, you know, where you're really just getting the the connect the connecting punches and stuff like mm-hmm. that. You know, it doesn't have to look like somebody is f- trying to follow them around. 
documentaries. Or, or the person punching has a camera on their wrist taped to it while they fight, that kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, um, I just, I'd rather see a clean fight scene for the most part. You know who did fight scenes, I feel like, really well? Equilibrium, have you seen that? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. I think they did fight scenes really well because they didn't, at least from what I recall, use shaky cam. They were doing brutal one-on-one fight scenes and the camera was out enough that you could watch and appreciate and think, like, that's really well choreographed. Yes. Whereas now, it's just like... You can just picture the director like, all right, now we need to get a one second shot of you pretending to punch this guy. All right, now let's move underneath you like I'm sliding between your legs and, you know, get his jaw going up. Just real quick cut flash. Yeah. And I think it's because Hollywood has a tendency to emulate what works, you know? Yeah. Like the Crank movies and the Bourne movies and stuff were really popular partially because they introduced that. And people was like, oh, that was cool. So they tend to overuse it now. Yeah, I agree. So, yeah, Ninja Turtles, I would say, like... I mean, I hate giving stuff ratings, but I would say, if I was going to say 1 to 10, I'd give it like a 6. Yeah. I'd like to own it only because I'm a Ninja Turtles fan. Yeah. If I wasn't a Ninja Turtles fan, it would be one of those like, "Eh, I'm I'm glad I saw it, but I'm never going to watch it. Even if I owned it, I probably would never put it in again. It's, you know, I saw it over a month ago now, and even as I was coming here today to talk about it, I was racking my brain to try to remember anything specific to talk about and couldn't. It was just... So it was not memorable. It was just forgettable action with characters I enjoyed. Yeah. So yeah, I also saw Guardians of the Galaxy last week. Right. Guardians of the Galaxy was awesome. Still want to see it. You need to see it in theaters, especially. I think that it'll really play well with the huge grand space scenes and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy, I just don't have enough nice things, good things to say about Guardians of the Galaxy. It was really, really, really good. Yeah, I need to find our free tickets. Maybe we can go watch it this weekend. You should, and I think Ginger would like it, too, because she likes Star Trek and Star Wars, right? She she has an appreciation for sci-fi and fantasy. She's as much of a nerd about that kind of stuff as we are. Yeah, and um, Guardians of the Galaxy, <coughs> if I were to like kind of boil it down to one word, I would just say fun. Yeah. It's just, it doesn't take itself too seriously. That's the feeling that I get from even the reviews that I've seen and just people talking about it. Her mom actually went to go see it. And her mom isn't a big... It, Any it, kind of that type of movie yeah, fan, exactly. really. Her husband is a little more into that sort of thing, and they tend to go see movies that he likes to see. So, But I think she even said that it was enjoyable. It's like, I'll give you an example. I'm not going to give any spoilers for the movie because you can see it, but one of the characters is an animated raccoon. Yeah. From that, what would you expect Would there would at least be one of in the movie about a raccoon? I don't know where you're going with that. There would be... A joke about him being a raccoon. Oh, okay. There would be, you know, oh, you rodent or oh, whatever. Right. Yeah. You know, it's just kind of to be expected. Yeah. They've, they've put like this, they, they're they not going to put a lampshade over the fact that there's a fucking raccoon in the movie. Right. What the movie does is I got the feeling that it knows you're expecting it. It knows, yeah, this is a raccoon. So at the point where that happens, they've stopped on a planet because they're waiting for something and they're gambling. Uh-huh. At the point where it happens... Star-Lord, who's gone off to do something else, the main character, walks back in, and Rocket has, like, a machine gun, and he's super drunk, pulled on a guy, and is about to shoot a guy. Uh And Star-Lord comes in, is like, whoa, 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 what's happening? And Rocket says, he called me a a vermin or raccoon or whatever he says it is, and plays it, it, the scene plays totally straight, there's no, like, goofball, raccoon slips, and he sees trash and runs over and starts eating out of the trash can plays up straight like he's just another character and it plays well he's drunk and star lord's talking him down is like look he didn't know and he's just pissed and is like you think i wanted this body and gives like a little exposition as to what rocket's backstory is Uh which if you know is a really fucked up backstory okay so yeah it's just the kind of stuff like that that they could have gone easy with it they could have gone the easy route with it and you know like all trash can over there ha 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 whatever right and they don't and they consistently through the movie don't take the expected or easy route out unless there is times where they do take that easy route, but they do it with kind of a self-referential wink to the camera. Right. Not a a physical, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, It's just really well written. And my big fear going in, besides the fact that nobody had heard of guardians of the galaxy was that it wasn't written by Joss Whedon. And I know only a few of the Marvel movies, Avengers was written entirely by Joss Whedon and, you know, some help. 
the other movies he's had his hand in. I don't know if he had his hand in Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. But even without Joss Whedon, it's very clear that they're still going for that style of focusing on the importance of character interactions, which yeah. is kind of a Joss Whedon thing. Yeah. As opposed to just like, I am Star-Lord, we must fight the villain, serious face, you know, that it's very easy to fall back on. Yeah. They did it really well. Um, I told you before when I was telling you about it off mic, more than once during the movie, I leaned over to my girlfriend and said, if this was Star Wars 7, I would leave perfectly happy and rejuven rejuvenated in the Star Wars franchise. Yeah. It's that good. There's, you know, planet hopping and aliens, and it's it implies backstory without beating you over the head with it. Uh -huh. So you can you can go in and, and see and be like, ooh, I can glean why this race, hate, race hates this race. Without them sitting down in a character doing some exposition about, like, we've hated this race ever since the war of yeah. blah, 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 Star blah, Wars blah. space politics. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's just, I know I'm, I'm going on about the movie. It was just, it was really good. If this is the direction that Marvel is going to go with some of their other franchises, like Doctor Strange that they're doing, Ant-Man, stuff that I originally heard about was just like, I don't give a shit. If they continue this caliber of movies, they're going to continue to sell out. It's just, it, it was amazing. And the reviews are in, and even non-geeks are seeing this movie and saying this movie was fantastic. Yeah. I think it would be a little bit much to say that this movie is going to, like, define this year as far as movies go, because we've still got a couple months left. Yeah. And what the fuck do I really know about movies? I don't, <laughs> I don't watch movies that often. Right. I just like, you know, there were space guns and laser battles or whatever. Yeah. But right, I really feel like plan, this, man. this could be a turning point for superhero movies. And I feel like partially Marvel did this, and this was probably in production before Superman Batman was announced or whatever. Yeah. But I think that Marvel almost went this way as kind of like, you know, a smirk at DC going super gritty with Batman and what it looks like from the picture so far that they're going to do with Batman versus Superman and what they do, did with Superman Returns. Yeah. A smirk and saying, you know, okay, bring that gritty bullshit. You know, this entire movie is borderline slapstick without being like, boo, banana peel. Yeah. <laughs> and and it, it works great. Right. You know, and I, I don't know... There's got to be an executive somewhere wringing his fingers together at Marvel, you know, <laughs> just like this is the most popular movie. And next year they're doing Batman versus Superman, where it's going to be super gritty and washed out grays and blacks. You know, Guardians is colorful as hell. It's funny. It still has a good story. It still ties the um, Marvel Universe together. Yeah. And stay through the credits. Howard the Duck is there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is kind of dumb it was it was funny i enjoyed it a lot of people i've seen online are kind of bitching about the fact of like because you know most marvel movies you stay through the credits and it's a uh, little spoiler for the next movie right sam jackson's there and he's talking to thor or they find mjolnir in one of the early movies yeah, you yeah. know and this isn't really tied to anything at all yeah there's no like this is what's happening next um, as far as complaints go at the movie, my only complaint is the love story is kind of ham-fisted in there. It doesn't really make sense why there's a love story except the fact that they need to have one. Yeah. That took me out of the movie a little bit. They don't beat you over the head with it. There's really just one, or it's two scenes that are like, ugh, God, like, they really could have left this out. The movie's two hours, which is good. Stuff that, like, they could have shaved off 10, mo 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and just left out this love story part. It's not really needed, but... You know, Hollywood's got to throw a love story in there. Yeah. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'd say if you haven't seen Guardians of the Galaxy, go see it in theaters. You definitely are going to get something from seeing it in theaters. Yeah. The soundtrack's really good. But yeah, going from talking about superhero movies and Batman versus Superman, I showed you the picture they released this week of the Batmobile. Yeah. What do you think of it? It's big. Yeah. Like, I mean, even the, even the, uh, the Nolan one was big, but... This is just... I mean, it looks like it's the width of two cars. It looks like it's a boat. Yeah. It should be... Maybe it's the bat boat. There's a lot of speculation that when they introduce Bruce Wayne, he will already be retired, and that this is him kind of coming out of retirement because okay. of Superman. I've seen a lot of speculation. There was like a picture or like a short clip that they showed at Comic-Con or something where a character, I think it might have been Batman, I don't know, I'm not sure on the specifics, but some character is in a warehouse, like an old dusty warehouse, and pulls a tarp off the bat signal, 
which people are are uh, people are thinking that that means that Batman's coming out of retirement okay. and like the bat signal he used to Batman around bat signal's done it's in a warehouse he's pulling it out to use it again or something yeah which I'd be cool with I I was kind of my fear is that it was going to be like who's this young strapping Bruce Wayne guy oh my parents died I've been training you know yeah it, it it's neat that to see one company doing that at least of just like at this point everybody knows who fucking batman is you yeah. guys know you you everybody saw our last batman movie you right. know right. so now batman's old older he doesn't want a batman anymore <laughs> he doesn't want a batman <laughs> i don't want a batman i'm anymore. done with the batman what are we gonna do i just i've got our company to run stocks are dropping <laughs> so yeah um I think the Batmobile looks all right. Again, I'm trying to do that thing where I don't judge movies ahead of time. It is very tanky. Yeah, it really is. I but mean, it just looks massive. I could it looks heavy. They could very easily fit it into the story, especially if they go with Batman's retired. They could do maybe that's partially why he retired. As he went on, it started to affect him. He started to notice he was getting more brutal. Yeah. And he stopped like I'm done with crime, I'm old, I want to run my company, I did all I could, I'm never going to be able to stop all of it. Yeah. I, I've compromised my morals more than once I'm out of retirement. And this could easily be a Batmobile that he's pulling out because he needs it for something, you know? Yeah. And there, you know, they could be a nod to it about, like, this is what I'm talking about. I mean, there's dual fucking machine guns on the front of it. Right. And the Batmobile, Batmobile even through, like, the comics and cartoons, had guns and rocket launchers and stuff. Yeah. But... I mean, it looks brutal. It looks like alien technology. Yeah. The way they did it. But, yeah, I mean, the fucking, the window to look into it is a tank. Yeah. The comparison to any Batmobile we've ever seen, really, is tenuous at best. Yeah, I mean, even the most recent one. It was more like, I mean, yeah, it was really tanky, but it was also fast, and even though it was heavy, it looked light. Yeah, this thing looks like... It might crumble a bridge if it goes over it. Yeah, exactly. But I'm sure, you know, maybe we see it in action. The way the wheels are kind of split to the sides looks sort of like a futuristic F-Zero style race car. Yeah. So, who knows? Maybe once you see it in action on the screen and it's zipping around, because I'm sure it will be. Yeah. I mean, shit, they might, the way it's built, it could even be one of those things where, like, these sides flip up and it turns into the uh, plane. It turns yeah. into the bat wing, so. That would be cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited for the movie. I don't really like the gritty way they go. But I think that it's because Marvel, and, you know, let me continue to suck Marvel's dick here for a minute. I think Marvel has definitely done a good job with making superhero movies fun. Yeah. And what's going to be hard for me to do, but I'm going to try to do when I go in to see this movie, is say, all right, Marvel does superhero movies this way. DC does superhero movies this way. Going in, you know, expecting a lot of laughs and jokes and, like, fun and, you know, gags. It's going to have it, but not nearly as much. Go in more expecting this is going to be dark. This is going to show the dark side of Batman, the dark side of Superman and superheroes and blah, blah, blah. And I think if people go in expecting that, to, you know, saying this about a movie sight unseen, if yeah. people go in expecting that, they might have a better time. Yeah, that's the real clincher for me. Because coming out of, like, coming out of the, uh, the Tim Burton-esque Batmans where, see, there, there, there was such... Good movies balancing a little bit of humor and a little bit of over the top in the first couple anyway. Yeah. And now they've gone with a really realistic style and there's very little if no comedy involved in it. No, there's really not. The comedy comes from little one-liners here or there, but for yeah. the most part. What's the point of doing all those push-ups if you can't lift a bloody log? You know? <laughs> and, oh, man, he was such a good Alfred. I would have liked to have seen him come back. Is he not? No. Well, the movies aren't connected in any way. No, they aren't. And I think that's what's going to kind of confuse people, too. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's no continuity. Yeah, and that's going to be hard. I mean, Marvel is is riding high on that, pumping out so many movies. Eventually, they're going to have to do a reboot. I mean, Robert Downey Jr. is only doing two more movies, I think. Yeah, I think, I think that the, he recently said that he wasn't going to come back for... Avengers 3, maybe? Yeah, I think that's what it was. The guy who does Captain America signed on for, I think, three more movies, or yeah. is on for three more movies, and that's it. There's a lot of talk that they're going to kill off Captain America, um, introduce the Falcon, uh -huh. and have Falcon become the new Captain America. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I thought, I thought, 
No, I haven't seen uh, Winter Soldier, but didn't <laughs> Bucky turn good by the end of it? Or? I haven't seen the Winter Soldier either. Okay. I, I, for some reason, I was In the comics, like, he does. Yeah, for some reason, I was feeling like maybe they're going to follow that, that storyline where Bucky eventually turns good and... Yeah, I've heard that. It's from the rumor mill online. I've heard people yeah. say they think it's going to be Falcon. I don't think there's really any basis for it. Uh, Falcon is going to be in one of the movies. Yeah. And he's... Falcon is a black character. Yeah. Falcon in the comics became Captain America uh-huh. in sort of the same storyline that the movies are following. Because the movies are following a storyline. It's just sort of-ish. You yeah, know? They're, they're, they're similar, but... So I'm I'm curious to see whether Marvel will ever really do a reboot or just continue to build on and eventually get new characters in there as new actors come along. I really don't know. I'd I, I'd almost like to see a reboot of X Men. They did with um, Days of Future Past. Well, yeah, they totally rebooted it. Yeah, they did. I haven't seen that one yet, but Days of Future Past was really good. Was they it? rebooted X Men two and three. Everything that happened. Jean Grey's still alive. Cyclops is still alive. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because they had... The movie starts out, and it's in the far-flung future. Uh, or not far-flung. It's, you know, 50 years in the future, I guess. So, right. tiny little flung. <laughs> um, a fling. Yeah. A flip. A, a flick. <laughs> a flick into the future. A f- a in the flick, flick of, the of the future. In the flick. Um, the Sentinels are killing all the mutants. Right. They need to go back in time... They have Kitty Pride send Wolverine's mind back into his body in the 70s. Because, you know, Wolverine doesn't really age. Yeah. So then he's going and trying to change the past so that the Sentinels haven't taken over everything in the future. Really reliable characters to send back in time, let me tell you. Well, th- people complained when that movie came out because in the storyline it was Kitty Pride herself that went back in time. Uh-huh. And a lot of people kind of went on the bandwagon of, oh, you know, there you go, you can't have a female as your main character in it. Yeah. I think more likely it was because they knew people would go see a movie that they knew Wolverine was the star of, as opposed to, like, yeah. who the hell's Kitty Pride? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll give you that. I mean, he's much he seems like much more of a main character than, you know, Kitty Pride would be anyway, so. But yeah, so over the course of the movie, you know, he saves stuff and then is in the new timeline where Jean Grey doesn't become the Dark Phoenix. Yeah. Basically, it was whoever the director of that movie is, I can't remember his name. I don't recall either. Basically said as the movie came out, those X-Men 2 and 3 not that great. I'm just retconning what they did. So <laughs> now so now we're back to where the X-Men were, basically at the end of X-Men 1. Yeah. Except Cyclops still alive, Jean Grey still there, a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, like, I I, I, like, I really liked the first one, I kind of liked the second one, and then after that I was just like, nah. And they introduced, uh, at the end of Days of Future Past, they introduced Cyclo- or Cyclops, Apocalypse. Uh-huh. Which is awesome. Apocalypse is hands down my favorite villain. Yeah. And they show him... It was really neat the way they did it, too, because credits, you know, end scene credits, and you see it says, like, you know, 2,000 years in the past, or it gives a date, but way in the past. Yeah. And you see just the pyramids being built, it's in Egypt, and just thousands of people all bowing down and worshipping someone. You see the camera kind of in front of their face, and it slowly pans back, and you see, like, a real thin, probably, like, 20-year-old guy all painted blue, really thin, and he's got his arms up like this as they're worshipping him, and that's it. Yeah. So it was neat because a lot of people, it ends, and they're just like, who the fuck was that? Who was that? You know, I could hear it in the theater even, like, that was Apocalypse. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's neat that they're also going with his story that he's the first mutant and basically became a god. Uh, god, how many times can I say basically in this thing? I've said it like five times. Basically, you could probably say it 100,000 times. I've said, if you play a drinking game where you take a shot or a sip of beer every time I say basically or yeah, <laughs> you're now dead, so you're not hearing the suggestion for this drinking game. It's Way caused a time paradox. My god. Things are getting timey wind me up in here, too. Yeah. Alright, so we'll uh, wrap up the show with our last story. Yeah, um, this is a pretty big one, too. Yeah. Definitely. Microsoft bought Mojang, the creator of, or the company behind the creation of Minecraft. Yes. For $2.5 billion. Yeah. With a B. With a capital B. That is a shit ton of money. And I know Mojang, when it started, was one or two guys. Yeah. I don't know how big the company is now when it was bought. I mean, it could have been hundreds of people, but I assume the way that buying a company out like that works is 
Notch as the creator of Mojang, and I think maybe the three other guys who were the head probably split that $2.5 billion. And then, you know, potentially trickle it down, maybe the people who have stock in the company or whatever. Yeah, I really have no idea how that stuff works. The, either way, I mean, businesses, we'll get right on the topic for a minute, but just looking at that number real quick, especially companies like Amazon buying Twitch, you know, that was a lot of money, too. Yeah. I remember, I don't remember what the number was off the top of my head, but it was just... It's a ridiculous amount of money that's being thrown around by companies nowadays. It makes me wonder how the money is transferred. I know Microsoft is one of the most successful, richest companies. Yeah. They have billions and billions of dollars. Yeah. I mean, does it work that they just buy it for $2.5 billion and, like, here you go, transferred into your account, there's $2.5 billion? I really have no idea. We'd have to get a financial analyst or something on to talk about that <laughs> that'll be a thrilling podcast yeah. bring on our financial analyst yeah do we even know any financial analysts no i don't think so no we don't there's <laughs> <laughs> a resounding no on that. um obviously because we both po yes yeah, seriously <laughs> besides um besides microsoft buying it which is a huge deal the the double whammy to a lot of people is not only did they buy it which puts into question uh exclusivity it just released on PS4 within the last couple of months. Yeah. Uh, whether it's going to continue to be supported for PS4. I mean, now that people have bought it, they can't just take it away. Right, yeah. Now that it's out there, but are they going to put out any more for it now, or is it going to be Xbox exclusive? I personally think they would be smarter to continue to support it, even on PS4, kind of diversify a little bit. Yeah, I agree. But the other big part of the news is that not only did they buy it, but Notch and the... Th Three other head guys, Jeb, these are both their nicknames, uh, Notch, Jeb, and two other of the people at the head of the company are all leaving it. So not only is Microsoft buying this company, but it's also losing the creative minds, the, the main creative minds behind Minecraft. Yeah. My, there's no way I've seen people talk about, like, oh, what's Microsoft going to do with Minecraft? They're going to ruin it. There's absolutely no way they're going to ruin Minecraft. It is, so far, it is just this endless well of money for them. Yeah. Every kid, every kid loves and plays Minecraft. Yeah. Without fail. It's insane. I'm a 30 year old man and I play Minecraft probably more than any other game ever. <laughs> and it's great. It, yeah. There's so much to it. With the new releases that they were putting out for Minecraft, especially after Notch left, they were kind of lackluster in what they would do. Yeah. Uh, the game got more and more bloated as far as uh, system resources. They never really streamed line it, which is, I'm hoping, something that, my, that Microsoft will do. Yeah. Um, the releases were kind of lackluster. If you aren't, weren't playing Minecraft with mods, it started to get old really quick. The mod community is great. I don't know. Is Microsoft going to support them as much? Or are they going to make it harder? See, that? I mean, they did get rid of their uh, indie game stuff, didn't they, with the new Xbox? Yeah. So, I mean, Which is why I think I'm going PS4. Yeah. I don't know if they have an indie thing, but I just I really love the indie market on Xbox Live, and the fact that it's gone on Xbox One is kind of a bummer. Yeah. I agree. And so I, it, it, kind of, it seems like they maybe weren't making as much money off of that as they hoped that they would, which seems counterintuitive because I know a lot of people were downloading those indie games. Or maybe they just, maybe the money just wasn't going to them. Yeah, you know, maybe it was going through them to the developers. But Well, it doesn't seem like, I would think, and you know, I'm not the head of a multi billion dollar corporation, right. that the breaking even of money or even slight loss just in that category of running the indie games would be worth it to show that you are actively supporting indie game developers. The problem with the Xbox Live indie marketplace, which is still there right now, is that there was just a lot of crap. Yeah. It didn't seem like it was that difficult to get a development kit and get a game out there. Right. Yeah. There were a lot of really shitty games on there. It, it seems like a bit of a slap in the face to indie developers, honestly, that Xbox One got rid of it. Yeah, so um, there were a lot of good na games that came out of it hmm. as well. Bastion was one of them. Hmm. Bastion Brothers, uh, yeah. which got a lot of accolades. I haven't played that yet, but that, that Meat uh, Super Meat Boy, Super Meat Boy, yeah, that one Fez. was really popular. Yeah, Fez. I've heard of Fez. I haven't played it, but yeah, I had a some of my most fun games I've played were on the Xbox Indie Arcade. Yeah. So anyway, going back to Notch, he announced on his uh, actual website, Notch.net that he was leaving Mojang September 15th. It, 
Go ahead. I was going to say the way he said it, and I know you're you're looking through to read a couple of quotes or something from him. The way he said it makes me feel like there's something a little more there. Maybe not in the in the buying itself, but maybe I don't know. I don't want to say depression because I know depression could get hit anybody. It's got to make it a little harder to get depression when you know a two point five billion dollar check is waiting to be cashed in your name. Right. But yeah, the, some of the way he said it was was weird too. Yeah. And it's it's hard for me, and it's shitty because I love Minecraft. I don't really know a whole lot about Notch, but you know he's good at what he does. He made a really good game. But it's it's weird to read what you know some of the quotes you're going to read right now. It's weird to read them or hear them and feel bad for him in any way considering even before Minecraft being bought out for 2.5 billion it was raking in a stupid amount of money split very few ways the first year Minecraft went on sale the guy became like a multi-millionaire yeah and he stepped away from uh, the actual Minecraft development a, a little while ago he, he stepped away from the development but he didn't step away from royalties and shit right, coming yeah. in he says, uh, I don't see myself as a real game developer. I make games because it's fun and because I love games and I love the program, but I don't make games with the intention of them becoming huge hits, and I don't try to change the world. Minecraft certainly became a huge hit, and people are telling me it's changed games. I never meant for it to do either. It's certainly flattering, and to gradually get thrust into some kind of public spotlight is interesting. A relatively long time ago, I decided to step down from Microsoft or from Minecraft development, Jens was the perfect person to take over leading it, and I wanted to try to do new things. At first, I failed because, or by trying to make something big again, but since I was leading it and I wanted to try... Oh, wait. Oops. <laughs> I failed by trying to make something big again, but since I decided to just stick to small prototypes and interesting challenges, I've had so much fun with work. I wasn't exactly sure how to fit into Mojang where people did actual work, but since people said I was important for the culture, I stayed. He goes on to say, uh, as soon as the deal is finalized, I'll be leaving Mojang and getting back to doing uh, Ludum Dares and small web experiments. If I ever accidentally make something that seems to gain traction, I'll probably, I'll probably abandon it immediately. Yeah, that's that was the quote that I thought was kind of telling and a little strange yeah like what do you what thought process do you think i mean and he's i think swedish yeah i believe so or norwegian something like that. one of those <laughs> one of those <laughs> one, of, one, one of those, those. <laughs> one of those snowy places um <laughs> so maybe it's it's partially a cultural difference in the fact that we as americans it's so ingrained of capitalism and success and like money yeah. maybe partially cultural in his stance of, you know, people tell me I changed gaming. That's not what I wanted. I'm stepping down. I don't really want it. If I make another successful game, I don't want to deal with that again. Yeah. Maybe that's just a cultural thing. Because to well, me, that sounds insane. <laughs> right. Uh, I mean, there's a portion of it like, have you ever been in a position where you have a certain amount of say in anything? Like, no. <laughs> job wise? I mean, it gets to a point where, like, you know, even my position now, I'm a house coordinator. So I don't, I don't have, I am not a boss of anybody, but I have certain things above the other people in the house that I have to take care of. And do you find that you favor Gryffindor more than the other houses? Yeah. <laughs> For some people, just having that extra pressure. Yeah, that extra pressure is just something that they just really don't want. Some people just like being a cog in the wheel. And you're put in the public eye no matter what. Yeah. Especially with a game where, you know, especially what he's saying of, he just, I created this game I enjoyed and it, it got out of hand. Yeah. You know, it's, I'm glad that he didn't say, cause this would have made my blood boil a little bit of just, I didn't ask to be put in the public eye. Yeah. That annoys me. In certain cases, I can understand when you're thrust into the public eye for something unfavorable. I yeah. can understand that. But when it's you're in the public eye, and yeah, I'm sure he gets a lot of shit from people. Oh, you changed this last update. Fuck you, Notch. I'm never coming back. You suck. You're right. a hack. Whatever. But most but money and numbers don't lie. Yeah. He knows that he's created something that people enjoy. And that part of the, you know, people tell me I've changed gaming. 
that to me feels a little, and maybe because it's just in words, but to the, to me that feels a little kind of eye rolling. Maybe it's because he's too close to the product, but Minecraft did change gaming in a way yeah. to show that there could be a game that's so open-ended sandbox and people will enjoy it has pushed games more towards sandbox stuff. Even then, and I'm very quick, as you've noticed, and and knowing me for years, and us even on this podcast, very quick to kind of eye roll and bemoan the very, very rich when they complain about their situation. Yeah. I'm not doing this with this guy, because in a way, I sort of understand. Yeah. He created a game for himself, or not for himself, but he created a game by himself originally that just took off. It made him a fuck ton of money. Yeah. It's cool that he's going to go back to what makes him happy. And he is able to go back to what makes him happy. He could sit on this money and never make another game. He could sit. He has enough money to get a couch that feeds him (laughs) and walks around like Modoc's head with spider legs. (laughs) And he has enough money to do that for the rest of his life. So honestly, good for him. He did, whether he agrees with it or likes it, he did change the face of gaming at least a certain type of gaming he changed the face of yeah and he he deserves it it's awesome he sold it i don't know i'm sure there's got to be some ill will there towards you know some of the employees like well what are we supposed to do now you know fearless leader all of our leaders are leaving because it's not just notch it's all of the heads are leaving at once yeah which to me also feels a little it makes sense with what he's saying about it getting too successful because he's taking the money and he's running yeah he's just there you go, Microsoft. Do with it what you will. Don't care. He's not staying on, which to me reads like the game outgrew him, you know? Yeah. He It got to the point where he's probably sick of hearing about Minecraft. <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> right, like those yeah. bands that are famous for one song, and now anytime they play, they're trying to play their new stuff, and everybody in the audience is just screaming out for them to play the Pina Colada song over and over again. <laughs> right, you know, play yeah. the Pina Colada song. Yeah, one hit wonderful, real big fish. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say on it, unless you have anything else to say. It's it's cool. I mean, good for him, honestly. Good for the company. My daughter, my girlfriend's daughter, love Minecraft. Every little kid I know. I know yeah. your uh, niece and nephew, or at least your nephew, I don't know if your yeah. niece is old enough to play it yet, love Minecraft. Yeah. It's just, it's a thing. It's a cultural phenomenon. I've seen, uh, I was reading a Forbes article where they were speculating that Minecraft is om- could almost be the new Lego property. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it's I, I can understand where he's coming from, especially if, yeah, this is not what he really set out to do. And he seems like a very, you know, warm-hearted kind of person. And, mm-hmm. and having that kind of light thrust upon him and that, and that celebrity thrust upon him seems like something that he is just not cut out for, period. And the stress, I would imagine, <coughs> of running the company that put out Minecraft yeah. and making a new game because of that specifically that you put out a game that's, either loved or hated but mostly loved by people yeah anything else you put out is going to be so scrutinized almost into oblivion you would have to get it right on every aspect of any new game you put out or people would just eat it and you alive for that yeah the the one paragraph that i kind of skipped here he goes on to say i've become a symbol i don't want to be a symbol or responsible for something huge that I don't understand, that I don't want to work on, that keeps coming back to me. I'm not an entrepreneur. I'm not a CEO. I'm a nerdy computer programmer who likes to have opinions on Twitter. So, I mean, it's just it's just something that he obviously just didn't want to begin with and is not cut out for that kind of celebrity. So. Yeah, and, and now he can tweet from his golden computer... <laughs> in between taking lessons on how to ride his uh, bioengineered Tyrannosaurus. <laughs> that's what rich people do, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I would do. <laughs> in between his alien robot fights. Yeah. Because once you hit a certain tier, this is a little known fact, here's some knowledge for our audience. Okay. Once you hit a certain tier of wealth, you automatically unlock all the alien technology that's hidden around us. Oh. You ever notice why Bill Gates, uh, whenever he's giving speeches, is always flanked by security guards with plasma cannons? Uh-huh. That's why. Oh, okay. Well, so that makes, makes a lot sense. more sense, yeah. The way he jetpacks away yeah. through time travel. Jetpacks through time travel? Yeah. He <laughs> doesn't, the jetpack doesn't actually fire anything. It just warps time around it. Uh-huh. So, so where like you were once Express here, ship. you're now here. That's how the Planet Express ship works from Futurama. Is it? Yeah. It doesn't, it, it doesn't actually fly through space. It actually makes space move around it. I did not know that. Yeah. Weird. You learn something new every day. Is that how all ships work in that universe? No, nope. just, just, just Farnsworth's ship. 
With my dying breath, I curse Zoidberg! <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. What do you got for shout outs? I have shout outs from Facebook. Kevin Jett, Jeremy Lehman. 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 Jeremy Lehman. Jeremy Lehman. Le- Jeremy Lehman. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Can you read these shout outs of Sean Connery and still make it uh, understandable? No, I can't do Sean Connery right you now. You do Sean I'm Connery. Sorry. I can't. Uh, Kevin this podcast Jeremy. is over. You're over. Yeah. Wayne. Wayne Stewart. Bree Blackwell. Keisha Dietz, Sarah Beth Neptune, and over on Twitter, Twitter, God <laughs> damn it, I can't talk today. Do you want to try over on Twitter again? No, I don't even want to try anything ever. All right. Mallory Schweitzer and fellow podcasters, the Angry Ginger at Seven Days a Geek. That's S, the number seven, E V E N D A Y S A G E E K. Should we just put a link for this on Facebook no. instead of them trying to understand your absolutely your drunk hobo reading of Listen, Brandon? Don't give me that's seven s seven like the number and even days a geek but yes, seven and but there's seven in there <laughs> and the Pod Racers podcast at Pod Racers Pod. It's cool to see that there's you know getting into podcasting. I didn't realize this that there's sort of a, a community a community like a brethren almost yeah. Because you put these in here, and I guess I need to get used to the community, because I immediately said, don't shout out other podcasts. Who do you think you are shouting out other podcasts? Well, it's just that, you know, like I told you, it's the have no other gods before me thing. Right. My fear is that you shout out another podcast. People do go listen to the podcast, which is awesome for people we shout out. And then they listen, and they're like, oh, they do kind of the same thing, but way better. Yeah. That's my big fear. Because (laughs) there are a, I would venture to say, at least... 10,000 podcasts out there better than ours. Probably. I would say, equivalently, there's probably 50, 800 000. podcasts that we are better than. I want to go with 50,000. That makes me feel better about my life. That we're better than 50,000 yes. other podcasts? Yes. Okay, so if we're better than 50,000 other podcasts, there's about 10,000 better than us. Yeah. Then you're automatically putting us in the top fourth of all podcasts? Yes. I'll buy it. Okay, good. And if you have any questions or comments, or you'd like to hear yourself mentioned on air, you can reach us on Twitter at Dueling Ogres, email us at duelingogres at gmail.com, or leave a comment on the podcast page or Facebook. Also, be sure to give us a, give us a thumbs fuck. You're just stumble fucking through this whole thing. Just a little stumble bumble. Give stumble us a bumble Hitchcock. Shut up. Give <laughs> us a five star review on iTunes and a thumbs up or a comment on Stitcher. That helps to boost us higher on the cool kids list. And also, uh, I recently put us on the Zune marketplace. Well, the Zune is definitely <laughs> research. Well, it's, <laughs> well <laughs> I know. Well, it's still supported up through Windows 8. You can find us at any uh, cassette... <laughs> Cassette tape vendors everywhere. <laughs> right. Um, so that that's all supported up to Windows 8. And then Windows 8.1 has a different thing where you can find music and podcasts. I don't know much about it, but I put us on there, too. My God, it. we're everywhere. We're everywhere. We're getting there, anyway. I, I think we're going to... I think I'm going to put us up on a couple other different markets as well, just to try and diversify and get us out there. Yes. Yeah. we'd like for people to listen to us. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm indifferent. No, you're not. <laughs> Tell them you love them. I love you. I Good. love all of you. Yes. Um, also, real quick, before you read the last little bit. Yep. Final week, end of the podcast, last song by uh, our friend Joseph Hale. Took his life a few months ago. Talked about it on the Depression episode. Our last three episodes have had his songs at the end. Uh, this is the final week we're going to do it. Uh, there will be a link on the Facebook page. You can go to his Reverb Nation, listen to all his other music. It's fantastic. If you're a musician and want to be featured at the end of our podcast, send us an email, send us a copy of your track or something. More than likely, we'll put it on there. Yeah, no problem with that whatsoever. All right, until next week, ogres, keep your clubs blunt and your tusks sharp. Good night. Time is a word to explain decay minutes and hours are just measures used to tie you 
Bang up job, buddy. Thanks, man. I do my best. You twisted that real good. I don't. Oh. Push it. Push it real good. The fuck was that? That's how the song starts out. Is it? Yeah. That was horrifying. I know. They're missing out on the face that you made while you did that. <laughs> you made it a thousand <laughs> times. You kind of got a little anime-ish in your eyes. I think not even intentionally. Way more terrifying than the actual song. Yeah. I have to pee. <laughs> you have to pee? I have to pee. If you can believe that shit. All right, well, I'll just freestyle rap while you go to the bathroom. Okay, you do that. No, I'm not going to do that. Do you can it. pause it. Do it. No, I'm not going to freestyle do it. rap. No. Freestyle rap. No. Brandon, freestyle rap. No. Brandon. Brandon, freestyle rap. No. Brandon. 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 Brandon, freestyle rap. All right, guys. Now that we're alone, I can tell you, Remington's keeping me hostage here in this house. Somebody call the police. I've been locked in his basement for months now. He brings me up here. He loads me up with amphetamines and just has me talk about whatever inane bullshit. I don't care about comic books. I don't care about video games. I just care about my freedom. So if you're hearing this, please help me. What was that? Oh. Oh my god. Flash. Remington. <laughs> Your computer. I don't need you, Flash. Um, I don't need you either, Remington. <laughs> <coughs> you think I need you? I won't miss you. But yeah, no, the garrisons... <laughs> the garrisons have been out. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my ragtime gal. gal. Send, Send me a, a kiss, kiss my boy, something. Baby, my heart's on fire. If you refuse me, honey, you lose me, and you'll be left alone. So, baby, come on and tell me I'm your own.